Welcome to Bloke on the Range. For my first video, I'm going to annoy some Mauser and Springfield fanboys with this. Meet Franken Rifle, the ugliest rifle I've ever owned. Now let's see what she can do. Fourteen fifty six. Not too shabby. Not the best I've ever done. Now, what is it that allows you to shoot a Lee Enfield action really rather fast? And as far as I'm concerned, faster than any other. And if uh, you're not shooting your Lee Enfield faster than any other rifle you've got, with the exception of perhaps uh, something very, very modern and very, very slick, you're doing something wrong. It all comes down to ergonomics. By sheer happy chance and coincidence, the bolt handle on a Lee Enfield is just behind the trigger, which means that if you're shooting it normally, it's right there under your hand. If you're, hold if you're pulling the trigger with the middle finger, it's right there, you can just hang on to it. So the the trigger and the bolt handle are exactly where you need them to be. Secondly, I can work the bolt without punching myself in the face. So I can keep my eye basically to the sights. And I've been shooting a lot of K31 Schmidt Rubin in uh, competitions, but I have to move my head. And I've got this bit of a tendency to tilt my head a little bit. But if I get back in practice with this, that should go away. Just to demonstrate the point on not having to move your head, here I have a Schmidt Rubin uh, 1889. I have to cock my head to the left. You cannot keep your eyes on the sights of this rifle, any of the Schmidt Rubin series. You really cannot because that bolt throw overlaps your head. Thirdly, when the bolt handle comes up, you can still see the sights. It seems really obvious, but if you try that with a Mauser 98K, you lift the bolt handle, you can't see the sights anymore. So with a 98K, you've, you've actually got to move your head out the way of the bolt, and you can't see the sights again until the bolt's closed. Thirdly, it's a rear locker. The locking lugs are here at the back. This means that the bolt throw isn't very long because all you have to do, all it has to move is the length of, um, of the magazine. In a Mauser or a Springfield or a Mosin Nagant, it has to go further because you've got the, uh, the, uh, the space of the locking recesses. So the bolt throw on a Lee Enfield is short. Also, and you might not have noticed this because it's quite subtle, is that the bolt rotation is only 60 degrees. And this is something the French copied in the Mass 36. Deliberately put the bolt, the bolt lugs at an angle. And finally, we have a positive primary extraction. What we've got here, and it'll be a bit difficult to see on film, as the bolt handle drops, Let's see if we can get the light right here. If I move back here, we should be able to see it better. Drop that. When you start to turn the bolt, it already starts to move backwards because the raceways for the lugs are cut at an angle. Now, a lot of rifles do primary extraction based on uh, the bolt handle or the bolt body hitting a cam surface somewhere up here. Or or, or up here on a modern Nagant, it's up here. Um, and that does give primary extraction, but not particularly positive. Here, it's all controlled by the bolt lugs. And actually, what it does is, if you get a sticky cartridge, you see the bolt handles back a bit, and as I push it down, 
Anyway, what I was trying to say before being rudely interrupted by a failing battery was that because of the way the primary extraction is set up based on the uh, lug, locking lug raceways, if you have a sticky case that doesn't quite want to go into, in, into battery, the camming action of the bolt handle cams it forward and pushes it in. And this happens all at speed. And there's another aspect that I should have mentioned earlier, which is that it cocks on closing. When you close the bolt, you have to push against the spring to do so. The disadvantage of this is that the mainspring can't be as tight as in, say, a Mauser or a Springfield, um, because there's no camming action to help you pull it back. So it has to be a reasonable um, weight. However, what this means is that when you lift the bolt handle and withdraw the bolt, you're only acting to pull the case out of the chamber and then eject it, and you're not having to uh, work against a, uh, the spring, the mainspring. When you slam the bolt forward, your hand's already moving very quickly anyway, so uh, you hardly notice it once you're used to it. I know a lot of people who are used to cocking on open action find this kind of weird, but it just adds to the smoothness because you're not, you're not having to as you open it. So anyway, all of this adds up to a slick movement, a slick movement of the bolt in basically, although you can go up, back, forward, down like a Mauser, you can actually do it in two movements, two smooth movements. That last one wasn't so impressive. Effectively with a spring fill or a Mauser, you can't do that. You are limited to up, forward, down. And yes, you can practice the movements, and some people get quite slick at it, but you cannot keep your eye on the sight and then just whip the bolt back and forward like that. Finally, what the Lee Enfield system uh, gives you over most others is a uh, 10 round capacity as standard. Now, this particular rifle takes AK magazines, so I can put as many as I want on it, but uh, the military ones, it's 10 rounds as standard, and that gives you uh, a huge amount more uh, ammunition right there without having to reload. Now in response to some of the uh, obvious Mauser and uh, Springfield fanboy criticism that will appear, oh, it's rear locking, it's weaker. No. <laughs> Why? Um, P.O. Ackley did some tests around the time, I think it was just after the Second World War, where he was uh, loading all sorts of actions up to ridiculous pressures and seeing when they failed and how they failed. And ultimately, with the uh, uh, SMLE action that he blew up, he had to fill it full of very, very fast powder. And uh, one advantage of rear locking, locking is if it does fail, it tends to just stretch. It fails safely. Um, and there are all sorts of wildcats that were made on 303 actions that uh, uh, put, put, uh, put the lie to this idea that, that Lee Enfields are weak. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of the Mauser fanboy business seems to be based on, oh, you can make superb hunting rifles out of them. Yeah. So? Good for you. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again sometime soon. Bye!